the sternum. This is the sternum or a chest bone. Sternum is composed of three main parts. On the very top of the bone we have the manubrium which also means the handle. Then the central and the largest part of the bone which is known as the body and finally the most inferior oriented part is the xiphoid process. On the manubrium itself we're able to identify several points of interest. Let's start from its superior margin in the midline where we're having a wider indented area which is known as the jugular notch. Immediately lateral to the jugular notch on either side of the bone we're seeing additional indented surfaces that essentially would become articular areas for the joint that is to be formed between the clavicle and the manubrium of the sternum. These are known as the clavicular notches. Rib number one attaches directly to a manubrium and it is interesting to observe that joint between first rib and manubrium is actually the primary cartilaginous joint which means that this piece of cartilage will ossify during the life and make bonding between rib one and the manubrium firm. Rib number two also attaches to the manubrium but only partly because at this point here where a manubrium meets the body of the sternum there will be a notch for attachment of cartilage of rib number two which is truly shared between the manubrium its upper half and the lower half of the articular surface that belongs to the body of the sternum. Attachment of the sternal manubrium to the body result in this bony ridge being observed as somewhat more interiorly oriented projection. It is frequently referred to as the sternal angle as the slope of the manubrium which slopes downward and forward is not matched by nearly just downward sloping the body of the sternum. At that point a little bit of an angle, obtuse angle becomes prominent and it is one of the palpable details in the sternum so that is the sternal angle. The sternal angle is palpable detail on your patient therefore identifying through your fingers this bony ridge and going further laterally you would be already experiencing the cartilage in the body of rib number two which is at the same time the first palpable rib. Rib number one is hidden deep to clavicle so there is no access to palpate rib number one. The body of the sternum. It is anatomically speaking quite dull. It only would offer to us multiple facets on either of its side to which ribs number two, number three, number four, five, six and seven would attach to the sternum. For that reason ribs one through seven are considered to be true ribs because they have direct attachment through their cartilages to the sternum either to its body or to the manubrium. Allowing the light to refract differently from interior surface of the sternal body will identify several additional transversely oriented ridges. They are actually nothing else than a consequence of our embryonic development where the body of the sternum is also composed of smaller parts that would fuse later in life together. These individual segments of the sternal body are known as the sternobrae. Final third and the last part of the sternum is the xiphoid process. On this specimen it has been additionally colored but in a living person it would be cartilaginous. Later on the xiphoid process is expected to fully ossify and upon its ossification it will firmly attach itself to the inferior part of the sternal body. Therefore the joint is considered to be also primary cartilaginous joint which is formed between body of sternum and xiphoid process. On the other side presence of cartilage is still to be found within manubrious sternal joint in order to maintain a little additional flexibility because sternum as a part of the thoracic cage has a significant responsibility to allow movement of the chest wall which leads to inhalation and exhalation. Joint between manubrium 
in the sternal body is considered to be secondary cartilaginous joint.